Everybody knowing of Black Diamond Services, we're at an empty house, lots of pet stains. All those white spots are treated stains that somebody had tried to work on. They all illuminated under a UV light, and unfortunately, they need to be worked on. But um, this is a move out clean, so they are only wanting us to focus on the soil. So let's take a look. So you can see it's pretty heavily soiled. Um, piece of furniture that sat right on the ground, clearly carpet is basically brand new there so we got this family room in the front here some stairs and then you saw that hallway and then there's a bedroom behind it uh, that is carpeted all the rest of this is these floors um, so it's a little update while I'm at it uh, haven't been putting a lot of videos out for a couple reasons number one took a family vacation before the kids started school and number two, I actually have a new employee. So that's Ray. Um, I actually worked with him years ago. So he has some experience um, in the clean industry already. So I'm just getting him up to speed on our standards. Um, so he's been vacuuming and getting that rolling. And then I've already got the pre-spray mixed on what I feel is best for this. Because it's heavily soiled in the walk path right here, this leads me to tell you not only is it a small dog because all these spots are small that they worked on but they don't walk with socks on or they walk with their shoes on all the time because it's super soiled right here okay so that tells me it's either got a lot of oils from our skin in the carpet um, or tracking stuff in from outside in here so I am using some citrus solvent to break that oily bond that I'm more likely going to run across in this area and even on the stairs because the stairs are pretty harsh in the center too so I didn't see them walking through here barefoot or anything because it's an empty home nobody's here but I am gonna go ahead and mix a little bit in my pre spray because that's gonna help me fight this carpet because if you start rinsing it and it's taken multiple times to get it out there's a good chance it's oily carpet and that you need some citrus solvent to basically break that bond and whenever I put some in it makes my life way easier it starts to cut through and turn out better so I'm expecting this carpet to, to look pretty good I don't can't say it's gonna look as good as where that furniture was but um, I told her you know let's focus on the pain point the soil what's showing the most and then hopefully it'll blend with these white spots but problem with some over-the-counter stuff is it could bleach it out um, and cause it to look brighter because if there's soap residue still left in the carpet when we clean it it's gonna show probably even brighter not always but sometimes that happens so you gotta let your clients know that so they're not surprised um, that there's a brighter spot in here because soap residue gets left in some carpets long enough it will pull color so we're gonna get ready and get going on this cleaning thanks for watching So you can do what you, you did, but just so you know, the brushes mm -hmm. go further out on the right hand side than they do on the left because the gears over here that run the brushes are on the left. So when you're going up against a, a wall, what mm -hmm. I normally do is just go straight to it and get real close 
because your brushes will get closer to the wall straight on than they will going from the side. So it's fine what you did because it's not really bad over here, but you still, the best option for an empty room like this is just to go right up straight into it and just get real close, you know, and it's okay if you touch the wall, it's just you want to be going super slow so that way you're not, you know, truly bumping into it. No, and until, until you get the hang of it, and especially in wear patterns, so like over over here, the, uh, the, the CRB will actually move differently because it, on the wear patterns, the brushes are grabbing differently. So it'll actually try and move with the wear of the carpet, and it'll become a little harder for you to maneuver. So you gotta you gotta watch that. So if you're using one hand because you get used to it, and then all of a sudden you go over a traffic wear pattern, it's gonna want to move around. So I I tend to go slower or you know move, use two hands in that area because I know it's gonna try and drag it somewhere, and I don't want it to hit the wall. On spots like that. Over it again. I mean, you could you could go at it like a different angle, yeah. but I mean, it is a counter rotating brush, so it is scrubbing two sides simultaneously. Yeah. But because of how soiled this spot is, uh -huh. it's not a bad idea to to give it another go over at a different angle like this might help a little bit. But it's already changed so much that rinsing it's probably going to turn out pretty dang good. But yeah, it's pretty soiled and it, we don't have background on this, so it could be mostly oils. So it wouldn't hurt to, to give it one more time over because the rest of this carpet's not bad at all in comparison. So an extra time over isn't going to do any damage. It's only going to do good. So, so yeah, see... If they were here and saw this and we had it all done with just CRB, there's a good chance they would think that we are done. Yeah. Just, I don't know if you remember the first job, that's what she was saying. She's like, it looks great. You guys are done with it already? <laughs> no, right we st still got to rinse it out. Yeah. So that's how much of a difference it makes with good pre-spray and the scrubbing is it'll make it look like you're almost done. Yeah. So... That's why I'm glad I learned about it after leaving the old job because this uh, pr proves that it makes a difference. Absolutely, yeah. So. I say even vacuuming makes a difference. Yep. It is very rare that you'll get a house that they want professional carpet cleaning and you won't see the need to vacuum. There are some people that are super OCD and might want it clean still, even though they vacuum probably daily or every other day. Right. But you will always get a little something out of the carpet, no matter how good of a vacuum they use or how often they use it. So it's always good to just take it out and do it. And if you get next to nothing out of it, you know what? It does... It does may seem like you wasted your time, but you know what? You're going through all the motions and the steps that need to be taken to get it as clean as you can. Because sometimes I've had some nasty carpets and barely got anything out vacuuming. And it's, yeah, it's, sometimes it's surprising. Hardly anything with the vacuum comes out, but once you start the CRB and rinsing it, then that's where the change is. They could be very good with vacuuming, but it could still be very soiled from how many people are in the house or pets because a vacuum is not going to get everything out Your edges are always going to be probably, well, not always, sometimes a little more difficult. So what you just did is great because okay. you came back to that corner a little yeah. bit. Hit it harder. Yeah. So that's perfect okay. doing that. Uh, but you can remember because it's empty, right. you have 
the full space to do you know three to four feet right okay. so that way you're not just focusedly pushing your back into it okay because that's what's going to cause use the trouble the space. use okay. the space so you can actually get that force of you pushing okay. with one hand out Ouch, yeah. and then just get slow when you get close to the base force okay. and you'll be fine it's okay to touch them as long as it's right. just slightly okay uh, now, do you like care like for instance, can I hit all the corners and then just work my way out? Yeah, so because of how small this room is, right. I'll do like four feet out or wow. three three to four feet out. Right. Same over here. Okay. And then because it's kind of tough to get around the corner, right. I'll do a little bit here too right. behind the door. And then I'll turn back around wow. and I'll hit this center spot that's still open right out the door. Okay. That's what's easy for me. If it's right. comfortable for you, that's what I like to do in these types of situations because you get all the outer perimeter done right. and then you can thoroughly clean the center where it's probably worse. Right. right. You know, and not have to worry about stepping on it. Slow down just a little bit once you get close to the baseboard. So typically when I'm cleaning, I'm going half the speed I would on average okay. for dry passes. Because it's already extracting some as you're cleaning, right? Right. So when you're doing your dry passes, you can go a little bit faster because it's already extracted some of it. Okay. Unless, unless it's trashed or really harsh carpet, then, then I'll do the same speed okay. over the whole thing. Like this room's not bad, right. so it doesn't need as much effort as like downstairs. Right. So there, I'll slow up my pace, okay. you know, or any area that needs extra tension, just double it up like you did on that corner over there.
came out beautiful. It's not the best of lighting, but when you see the before and after of this area, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I took a before and after of these stairs too, the stairs and this path to the kitchen were the absolute worst areas. The carpet's been a little loose in every, every room, so it does need to be stretched, but this house is up for sale. So they wanted it to look clean and presentable, which I believe we completely accomplished. So you know whoever buys this house is not gonna keep white carpet, because I wouldn't. Sure, it makes the house look bright with the lights and or windows open, but that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This one was more of a teaching experience a little bit. Um, obviously going over stuff with Ray as he is learning our methods. And so that's why you hear a lot of talking in this one. I know some of you don't like that, but hopefully some of you who are cleaners who are you know, getting into it may have learned something from this. Um, and that will be a benefit hopefully to somebody. Um, if you're looking for non-talking, go straight to the ASMR playlist. Most of those are zero talking um, and just straight cleaning. So you'll see those in the playlists on our channel. Thank you again for watching. You guys take care and we'll see you in the next one. Let's take a look at this dirty water. Oh, to be expected, that does. All right, now let's take a look at this filter bag. This is from just the last job, that white carpet. There was some kick out, so I'd imagine this is gonna be kind of bad. Yeah, not horrible, but definitely a decent amount of stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one again. I know it was a lot of talking. You hear me kind of uh, instructing Ray a little bit. He's learning um, the way we do things. And so there is a little bit of learning curve because where we used to work, we did half the steps. Um, they didn't require us to do CRB vacuuming and the machines that we had back then were not that powerful. So um, it is a little harder to maneuver and get used to. And especially if you haven't done this job in a while, it is a little tough. So. Um, I hopefully somebody out there will learn from this video and uh, be able to apply it to their own business or just learn something new. So thank you so much. I appreciate your time. If you watched all this, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite part was. If there's anything um, you want me to go over at some point, if it comes up during a cleaning and um, I know about it, I will try my best to go over it and give you guys a little content in that type of way too. So hopefully it'll benefit you and uh, you'll be able to apply it to your daily life or your business if that's what you're doing. So thanks again guys. Nolan of Black Diamond Services. You guys have a great day and we'll see you in the next one.